Yeah, so I share a link. Uh, you'll be able to see the link. Uh, can you confirm? Okay, let me share my screen. Yeah, the link is, is there. Right. Uh, so let me share my screen. Okay, can you see my screen? Yeah, it's visible. All right, okay. Um, so thank you everyone for joining. Um, as um, introduced, my name is Shamsuddin Muhammad. Um, uh, I will be one of your instructors in the Ariwa Data Science cohort three. Um, so for those of you that were here last week, um, we did an introduction of what we will be doing in this um, fellowship. Uh, but um, as well, we'll be using something called GitHub and Git. Uh, but right now, um, uh, the GitHub, you are not familiar with that. So we'll be putting some con content here uh, as soon as you are familiar with the GitHub. Uh, so everything will be on Git and GitHub. Um, so you can see here, oh, um, uh, start recording. Uh, let me. Um... It's already recorded, sir. Oh, okay, cool. You put the recording, right? Yeah. It's okay. 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 Um. So you can see this is an introduction. Um. This is program as we made mention in the introductory sessions. Um. It includes several. Um. You know. Uh, part. Uh. Python, machine learning, and deep learning. Uh. The Python part. This is just mainly concerned about learning Python for data science. Um, we are not going to do, um, you know, any machine learning, but just to give you foundational skills that you need to do machine learning, because without Python skills, programming skills, you will not be able to do anything. So that's um, the main purpose of this, uh, you know, first part. Uh, so when you finish, then, um, you know, people that successfully finish with the assignment and project, then they can move into the machine learning state. So not everyone here uh, may be moved into machine learning state if you are not be able to cope with the rigor. Um, so we already made mention that uh, we hope the, this fellowship to be two months, but we have like, um, you know, getting started where we will take like one or two weeks to just to make sure that everyone is set up, your computer is set up, you finish installation, then we dive into Python, um, you know, uh, the main course. And we are happy to receive your feedback. So if you uh, is anything you, we can do to make um, the cohort much better, uh, your experience also to make it much better, please feedback. Uh, is really welcome and uh, reach out to us. Um, uh, the week one, uh, so the last week, uh, we had a session where we introduced the cohort. We, um, you know, uh, did a lot of things. Um, here, if you can go, you can have the recordings from our YouTube channel. Um, I think, uh, oh my God. Yeah, so if you go here, click this link, you can go to the YouTube channel. We also have, um, you know, uh, the introduction slide. Um, uh, um, let me just see something. Um, okay. Um, right. So we also have um, this introductory slides. So the introductory slide we had um, during the introduction session is here. So if you miss our session, you can be able. Um, if you meet, um, if you miss our session, you can have a quick look at our introductory slide. So when you click here, it will basically take you to our introductory slide where we discuss about um, you know uh, fellowship. Um, it is. Uh, Oh, I think maybe I put the wrong slide. This is maybe cohort three, 2.0. Um, maybe I will update the slide. But yeah, um, basically this is code two, but I will update the slide. Um, also our YouTube channel, you can visit that. Um, this is our website. Um, if you don't know our other web, data science website. So this is our website. And um, uh, we will update the fellows. For example, we can see we have fellows. 
uh, for example, our cohort one, cohort two, if you look at cohort one deep learning, uh, cohort one machine learning, if you come here, you see, um, you know, uh, our fellows uh, where they have been doing and other stuff. And we also have our mentors where you see the mentors. So, so we have a couple of mentors. Um, so this is just uh, giving you the general structure of RIO data size. Um, also for cohort two, we use GitHub repository. So this is our cohort two GitHub repository. Um, if I open it here, you'll be able to see what we did um, um, in the last fellowship. Um, yep, so you can see this is our GitHub repository for the second cohort. Uh, everything is documented here. Uh, you can see the uh, fellowship is divided into three stages. Uh, stage one is what we call um, getting started. Uh, stage two is what we call data science. Uh, stage three is what we call machine learning. So um, in this getting started, or we ask some of you that um, you know are familiar with other stuff, you can just dive in and follow this because we have a recording of everything on getting started. So you can dive in into having you know looking at the tutorial and whatever we've um, you know uh, um, created. But in the meantime, we're gonna cover everything from scratch, so you can follow along as we do. So this is basically what we did um, last week um, and some of the cuff of what we did. And um, if you missed that, you can basically watch the recording, watch the slide and whatever. But today we'll continue with what is um, getting started. So getting started is just um, a step that will make sure that every one of us is carried along in material of your background, whether you studied biology, whether you studied physics, whether you studied computer science. Um, the most important thing in getting started step is to carry along everyone to make sure that he has his computer set up um, in the next, um, and he can do a bunch of other stuff that will be necessarily needed uh, if we start the machine learning, uh, if we start the Python, because in the Python stage, we'll require everyone to have GitHub repository and you'll be pushing your assignment um, you know, weekly in GitHub, repo GitHub repository. So because of that, we need to teach you how to use GitHub and other stuff. So that's why we have this, what we call getting started. Um, uh, so at Git getting started, we'll cover a lot of stuff. So the first one we'll cover what is uh, Python installation, um, you know, BS code, getting familiar with BS code, uh, how to use what we call Markdown. Uh, but not only that, we also discuss what we call medium blog post, how you can create your medium blog post. So the main purpose of medium blog post here is that uh, we typically want to student or our fellows to be writing there on an experience because it is said that uh, the best way to learn something is to teach. So when we teach something, for example, today, uh, Python installation, so we expect students, for example, to go and create a medium blog post uh, explaining to people how to do Python installation. So for example, if you do Python installation, installation medium, uh, definitely I believe you'll be able to see uh, some medium force on Python. So you can see uh, medium force, uh, Python introduction, installation and base. So you can see somebody wrote like a medium blog post explaining uh, what is Python, uh, also how to do installation. So what we want is, after the sessions, uh, we want uh, our fellows to go and write, you know, a kind of, uh, you know, introductory medium blocks post for each week session. Uh, if we, this week we cover Python installation and other stuff, so you can go and write blog posts. And uh, the main purpose of that is number one, it strengthens your learning experience. So it, it strengthens your skills um, for writing and also, well, and also to make sure that you understand the concept. That is number one. Number two, you can use these skills for writing in Medium to put in your CV because once you apply for some concept, some application or whatsoever, uh, you, you can put like your uh, profile. People will see your skills. Um, nowadays in computing, it's not like you just give your CV that um, um, I do my service NYC, I do this. No. In computing, what we want to see is what can you do show us. So this is a good way to start, you know, having building your portfolio and other stuff. So that's the essence of, uh, you know, Medium. And also we'll um, show you how to set up your Windows PC for data science. There are a lot of stuff, um, installation that may be needed for that. And also we we'll discuss what is command line basics. Um, all this one may be covered, for example, by Dr. Idris or Dr. Ibrahim in the coming week. We we'll also have Git and GitHub, uh, where we show you how to Git, and then finally, um, you know, 
uh, we we'll discuss. So these are some of the getting started stuff that we'll cover in the next, uh, uh, I guess, two weeks uh, before we dive in into the Python. Uh, we cannot dive into the Python without having this prior uh, Oracle site um, knowledge because um, you will not have smooth experience and smooth learning. So that is the purpose of this stuff. Um, right. Okay, so let's dive in into the first tough step, introduction to Python and data science. So here I will talk about, um, if you remember some of you, we released a call for two, uh, um, you know, introductory session. Number one, we release a call for um, introduction to Python and also R programming. But at this point, we only uh, absorb student to Python uh, because uh, we feel um, having the Python as well can serve as requisite for all the needs uh, for your data science and machine learning. But we still do the R programming, but after the Python. But then let's dive in and see why, what is R, what is Python? Um, this is it. So why are we doing or start choosing uh, Python programming? So what is Python and why Python is widely used in data science? So Python is a high level general purpose programming language. What this means is that Python can be used for almost anything. You can use Python for data science. You can use Python for web programming. You can use Python for um, you know, uh, your academic research. Everything you can think of, you can use Python. That is why it's called general purpose programming. And it was designed to be easy. Yes, Python is easy because it just uses syntax like human syntax. For example, if you want to print something in the screen, you can just say print. Um, that gives you, you know, a step, uh, something to do that. So that's why it's called, um, you know, it is easy for beginners and experience. And nowadays, Python become the kind of de facto standard or standard for machine learning, uh, for deep learning and anything. Uh, Python now, if you want to do deep learning, if you want to do machine learning, if you want to do uh, data science, one of the most widely used language is Python. So that's why we chose Python to do in this course. Some of the key features for Python, for example, readability, uh, it's easy to understand, for example. What does that mean? Um, uh, Python, um, okay. Uh, let me sign in into the no. Okay. Right. Um okay, so this is where we are. Uh I already opened it. Okay, um, key features for Python, uh, readability. So Python code is easy to read and understand. As I said, for example, if you wanna write Python code in Python to print something, you can just say print and you can have something like this. And you know you can have something, welcome to ARIO data science, to ARIO DS. So you can see here, it seems like we are using like, you know, uh, something like, um, you know, um, common language we know, just print a keyword. So this is why it's easy to read and other stuff. Uh, it has strong community. Uh, Python has strong community. What this means is that when you have any issue or problem with Python, uh, you'll be able to quickly solve the problem because uh, Python has a strong community. Maybe the question or problem you um, you know uh, encountered is already solved the moment you put it in Git. Um, you know uh, Google will be able to solve uh, versatility, and the Python can be used for many other stuff in machine learning and data science. Um, yeah, so that's uh, why Python and the Python we can see can be used for data analysis, can be used for data visualization, can be used for machine learning, anything you can think of, Python can be used. So that's why we said um, we are going to start with Python programming because it will give you us a solid, um, you know, uh, background to start um, our journey for data science. In fact, when we reach to the next stage of machine learning and deep learning, we will mainly use Python. I will not be using R for that. Now let's move to R, but some of us may be wondering, so what is R programming? So there are two main programming languages for data science, main programming, Python and R. Both these languages are powerful. 
but they have their own different strength and weakness. So for example, Python uh, is mostly used um, you know, uh, for production wise um, or web applications. What I mean by production wise, for example, if you want to develop may maybe machine learning or deep learning something and put it in the web uh, where people can use that, Python is now the world, I mean, standard in the industries. Of course you can use R, but Python is most widely used. Um, for machine learning, um, most of the widely used libraries for machine learning and deep learning, they use Python. Um, then you can use also use Python for everything, including data analysis and uh, you know deployment. But why R? R is sometimes called statistical programming languages. So R is most widely used, um, you know, uh, for statistical stuff. Uh, I also use many in research in academia, for example. In social scientists, they use R, biostatistician they are, because the uh, R has a lot of packages and support for deal, for using in social science, for biostatistics, for anything related to, you know, uh, you know, maybe biology and other stuff. So most people use R. Uh, so there, this kind of, you know, uh, thinking on which one should I use? Should I use this or that? Um, you can use anyone, but it depends on your, um, what you want to achieve, uh, then you can choose what anyone. So, but the current trend today, Python dominate R in machine learning in AI. And R is used mostly in academia, for example, by statistician, uh, statistician, uh, mathematicians, they use, you know, R programming. But also if you are from computer science background, uh, we can, we know that Python dominates, um, you know, programming, uh, most dominant programming language. But the thing is, you can leverage the, um, you know, uh, uh, the features for the boss. So if, for example, you want to use data analysis or visualization, R programming is way much better, has strong, you know, um, emphasis, has strong, um, you know, uh, stuff that you can use for visualization and data analysis. But for modeling, machine learning, and other stuff, Python is the way to go. So there is this, you know, uh, which is which. But in this course, we will be using Python. Uh, you know, just to let you know that not only Python can be used by machine learning, but also R programming can be used for machine learning. Uh, yes. So if you want to learn more about uh, this debate on R versus Python, you can, um, you know, watch some recommended videos here in YouTube. R versus Python, which is based. Uh, this is just recommended uh, recommendation. Um, you are not interested. You, uh, we are not, um, you know, telling you to go and read watch them. But if you want to explore further, you can go and watch this, you know, uh, recordings. All right. Um, that's the, that about um, introduction to Python. Uh, now let's dive into the next stage: uh, how to do Python installation. So. Last week, I already asked some of you uh, that if you have time, you can go and start uh, watching how uh, last year we did, you know, Python installation and other stuff. Uh, if you have done so, uh, write in the chat if you have your, you know, Python installation ready. Write in the chat if you have your Python, you already installed Python. If you install Python, uh, or you already have Python installed, write in the chat for us. All right, so I can see um, we have many people with, you know, uh, Python installed. Um, right. Okay. Nice. Okay. All right. Nice. We have many people Python ready done. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. So congratulations for setting up your Python, uh, which shows um, you are ready to dive in and start um, working with Python, uh, which is really good. 
Um, but I do believe still, um, you know, okay, Anaconda install. Mm -hmm. Right, done, ready. Okay, good. Okay, so what we can do is this. Okay, nice. Jupyter 2, okay. So um, I can see most of us have installed uh, Python, but uh, let's dive in and see uh, something that uh, uh, we will maybe learn from one or two things. I believe some of us may have not installed Python or other stuff. So how come, what happened? So for our data science, um, getting Python installed, this is the first step. If you cannot install Python on your computer, you cannot move to anywhere in the next sessions. So if you have any problem or trouble, ask questions in the Telegram channel. After the session, we have our fellows out there to help you, our, our mentors to guide you. Get your Python installed. But before we dive in or start looking at, on the details on installations or uh, how to do the installation, let me introduce two concepts uh, that you may be not be aware. We have our computers and we have, um, you know, operating different operating systems. Uh, we have Windows operating systems, we have Mac operating system, and we have Linux operating system. Uh, some of you may not know these differences. Uh, some of you might know these differences. Uh, can we have somebody that don't know what is Windows uh, operating system, what is Mac OS, what is Linux? Uh, in the chat, if you don't know, um, tell us. Um, uh, if you don't know what is the difference between Windows, Mac OS, Linux, write in the chat, say yes. Just type yes. Okay, yes. So we can see we have a lot of people that they don't know. Right. Okay, so what do we mean by this? If you want to install Python on your computer, there are different ways to do the installation, but depend on type of the computer you have. If you have a Windows computer operating system, there is different installation procedure. If you have a Mac OSS computer, there is different operation procedure, installation procedure. If you have a Linux, there is different um, uh, installation procedure. But what I thought is most of you, you are using a uh, Windows uh, PC. Uh, so if you have operating system by Microsoft, Windows, then you are using Windows computer, Windows. So Windows OS. So if you have something like this, uh, something like this, this Windows, this is called you are using computer that is based on Windows. If you, are, if you know this, <laughs> I know you already know this. So if you are using this stuff, then your computer is Windows, Windows based. But if you are using this Mac OS, uh, this computer, this guy, you can see them with something like Apple, right? Um, you know, Apple computers. So if you are using this, then you are using Apple. Um, if you have this like this, uh, which I believe anyone with Linux here knows um, the already difference between those two. Uh, so you can see if you are using this, you are using Linux. We have different Linux operating system, for example, Ubuntu and um, what's there about. Right. So I, I believe... 90% of us here, you are guys, you are using Windows operating system, which is okay. Um, but if you are using Mac OS, um, some of the installation procedure may differ from people that are using Windows. So whenever I say Windows, the next time just assume that I'm prefer um, I'm referring to people that are using Windows-based computer. When I say Mac OS, I'm referring to people that are using Apple computer. When I say Linux-based PC, I'm referring to people that are using Linux operating system. So just put in your mind, what is it? What is Windows? What is uh, Mac OS? What is Linux? Um, does that make sense? Or you need more explanation? What is Linux or whatever? Um, okay. Now, um, there are two ways to do installations, uh, to install uh, Python on your computer. Uh, yes, we have two ways uh, to install. The first one, uh, which is most easier one, I think, uh, is the this one, uh, option two, which is uh, installing Anaconda. For beginners, if you are a beginner, uh, you can do this. Um, as we move on, you can uh, you know, learn the other one. 
So let me just start with the ocean one, um, which is uh, Anaconda. Um, so Anaconda is kind of a tool that allows you to install everything needed for your data science journey. It's a software. So when I say Anaconda, it means it's a software for doing data science. Now, when you install Anaconda, Anaconda come with Python. It will install Python for you. When you install Anaconda, it will install Python for you. It will install, um, you know, uh, a lot of other stuff. For example, pandas, NumPy, everything that you need to do data science, Anaconda will install it. Now, how can you install Anaconda? So what you need to do is Anaconda installation. Um, you go here, for example. Uh, so you visit this website right here. So for example, you can download Anaconda here. Uh, you can see that. Or you can install Miniquanda. Yes. So let's install Miniquanda. If you don't have a very strong internet, uh, or your internet, um, you don't have very uh, good data because the Miniquanda here, Miniquanda here, Anaconda may take like a you know a large amount of your internet. Uh, I mean data, but you can install what we call Miniquanda. Miniquanda is like kind of small version of Anaconda. It's small version of Anaconda. So you can install mini quanda, this one, mini quanda. Um, uh, yeah, so you can install mini quanda for Windows. Uh, let me share this. Anyone you want to install, you can install quanda. Yes, installing um, mini quanda or quanda is optional. If you already install Python, you know how to do installation for other stuff. But if you are a beginner, uh, you can just follow this procedure and install Miniquanda for your uh, stuff. So Miniquanda for Windows, you click here to download. For Mac OS, download from here. For Linux, download here. So if you uh, you have Windows, you can download Miniquanda from here. But if you want full-blown installation, you have very good internet. You can download Anaconda, which is, uh, you know, it may take uh, much of your data. Uh, but the main purpose for these two, Anaconda or Miniquanda, as I said, Anaconda and Miniquanda, they are softwares that will install everything necessary for your data science journey. Nothing much. Anaconda or Miniquanda, they are softwares. They come with a bunch of softwares that when you download them and install them on your computer, they will automatically install softwares needed for your data science journey. While the two different between Anaconda and Miniquanda is that um, yeah, you can see Anaconda or Miniquanda. So these are some of the same. Um, Anaconda, uh, you can see number of packages. If you install Anaconda, you will install packages for doing data science, about 250 packages for doing data science. When you install Miniquanda, you only install 70, less than 70, which are enough for you now to do anything you needed for data science. When you install Anaconda, it will install 4.4 gig. But when you install mini quanda, it will only install 480 MB. So you choose which one do you like. If you want to download 4.4 gig, you have internet, that's fine. Um, if you want to download, so for me, advisably, um, what I can say, don't install Anaconda. Install mini quanda. If you already install Anaconda, that's fine. Um, you use up your internet data and it take much of your space. But if you haven't installed, then install mini quanta only. It can do everything you needed. Um, that is it. Um, yeah, there is no drawback for using mini quanta, uh, but only I think, um, yeah, yeah. So as of beginner, everything you need to do in data science when you install mini quanta is enough for you. You don't need anything. But and also one of the advantages is that it, uh, you know, occupies less memory. You can see that 4, 480 MB of your memory, um, of your um, disk space. And also less than 70, um, you know, packages. But Anaconda, 250. Even some package, when you sell 250 packages, up to your lifetime as a data sign, you will not be able, you will not be able to use other packages. So, right. Um, I will share again this link. Download mini and install. Um, and tell us uh, in the chat if you have any issue with installation. Now, before we move in, um, I will wait for like two to three minutes for people to download Mini and install uh, before we move on.
you can also type question in the chat uh, if you have any before um we finish downloading the mini quanda if you have any question when you download the mini quanda i believe we all know how to download something and do installation when you download it you double click to install so this is the anaconda click download uh, choose a version that match your operating system uh, run the installer after you download and then uh, you can do verification to see whether the anaconda you install okay but when you finish installation and set install successfully then that's fine yeah if you have any question you can type in the chat so somebody is asking about uh, uh yeah i don't know how to fix it conda yeah so yeah yeah so yeah so when you install mini quanda when you install mini quanda it install python for you automatically yeah when you install anaconda it install python it install everything quanda and every other thing when you install mini quanda it is also install python and all other packages so you are fine install mini quanda when you install mini quanda you don't need to necessarily need to install python separately when you install anaconda you don't need to install python separately because installing anaconda or mini quanda will install python on itself yes somebody is uh, asking us about uh bs code we are coming to bs code uh uh yeah so if you already have the anaconda then that's fine So somebody has saying that he doesn't have the PC, so we don't have um, um we cannot help you at this moment because you don't have PC. All right. So verify Anaconda installation. Um, if you install Anaconda, you can verify the installation uh, uh by following these steps. Uh, but if you use uh, Mini Quanda, we'll come and see. Um, you know, you can go to your terminal and type Python version. When you see Python. Uh, you, uh, it shows you the version of the Python, then it means automatically install. But now I don't want to dive us into all this stuff. What I want you is just go and download Mini Quanda like this. Click to download. When you click here, uh, it tells you which what which one do you want to download. This one, click to download. Uh, when you click that, it says download. When you click download, it will download on your computer. Then double click on it when you download to install it. So that's it. Um, I have other recommended, you know, videos here to, uh, you know, if you want to see how to do in Quanda installation, you can watch these recordings. Uh, they are based on YouTube's uh, many explanation there. So that's uh, in a Quanda. But another option, which is more manual, uh, that you need to install something on yourself separately, is to go to Python website. So Python official website. So you need to go here, Python official website, which is this. So you can see this is Python official website and you can see you can download Python. So you can see download. When you click here, download, you will see something like this, download, right? Uh, because I'm using Mac OS as my computer is Apple. That is why you see Mac OS. If you are using Windows, you see Windows. So, and then click here, download, and then download. The moment you download it, save it and double click it to install on your computer. I believe we already know how to install something on a computer when you download it. You just need to double click and it will, um, you know, unzip packages and other stuff. Right. Um, okay. So that's uh, one uh, way to install. Sorry, I'm Mohammed Alaya. I'm joining this team. Later. Hello? Hello, I'm Mohamed Sani Alaya. I'm uh -huh. joining this uh, platform right from Abuja here in Nigeria. Okay. So I came uh, the network glitches, so I, I joined this uh, conversation at least, this webinar. So okay. I want my question, the Python and the uh, Anacoda, are they doing the same work for data science? Yes, so, yeah. So let me um, break this in into simple. Now, if you want to do data science, if you want to do data science or programming first, you need to install Python and you need to install other packages. First, install Python, install, for example, Pandas, install NumPy, 
install you know uh, num uh, uh, matplotlib you can see you need to install many other uh, packages right now if you don't want to install this stuff separately one by one the best option is to go and install mini quanda or anaconda when you install mini quanda or anaconda it will install all these packages necessarily required to do data science without going and install python separately without going and install pandas separately without going and install numpy separately installing mini quanda or anaconda will install all these packages at once it will install python also together so these steps as i said as a beginner because you may encounter some issues while installing this separately one of the best way as a beginner is just go and install mini quanda you can install anaconda but anaconda is heavy 4.4 gig but mini quanda is lightweight version of anaconda lightweight version of anaconda meaning that it can do everything that anaconda can do um, mostly i mean but with less packages comes with less package for example number of packages it will come is less than 70 and the space it provides is like less than uh, approximately 480 mb so that's the that is it um i think uh, this should be uh self explanatory um for those of us that want to follow the other method to install python you can follow this install python go to a python official website which is this that we went and uh, when you go to python then you go to download and you can click download here download python um so when you download it you follow the step necessarily to install download the install installer um yes so we have seen now two ways to install python one way which is we recommended is to download mini quanda uh, is much recommended for the installation um another way um is to uh, install python separately and then subsequently you can install um other stuff So somebody is asking he is he has downloaded and installed mini quanda how can he verify so this is how you can verify uh for example you can open your command prompt uh um the reason why i haven't shown that one here you may find it difficult because we haven't covered something called Py uh, command prompt but if you know uh in your because i'm not using windows that is what we call cmd uh, if you know cmd you can open uh um, you can open your terminal and type, for example, this one, Python version. You'll be able to see whether uh, Anaconda is installed or, or Python is installed. Uh, let me show you this. Let me show again another thing. Okay, let me do this. So, for example, um, uh, can you see my screen? Can you see my screen? Yes. You cannot see. You can see, sir. What can you see? Uh it's like you open you your just screen. Oh, okay. Just okay. Um, it seems to be a programming, a programming uh, dashboard or something else. Okay, no problem. Um, I want to share you something. Oh, yeah, it's, it's okay. We can. All right. Um, Okay, um, let me share my screen again. Okay, so for example, um, I have uh, something here called terminal. Uh, in your Windows, that is what is called, in Windows, that is something called CMD command from or something like that. Um, we'll cover that one. Uh, but if you know that, you can type something like this, Python. 
Python dash dash version, you'll be able to, it will tell you the version of the Python you have. My Python version is 3.90.13. So this means that Python has several versions. Now I think we are in Python uh, version 10 or whatsoever. Yeah. So when you see the prompt tells, give you the version of the Python you have, then you have, um, you know, you are quant, uh, mini quanta or anaconda installation is successful. Yes, you are anaconda or mini quanta annotation, um, uh, installation is successful. When it tells you, show you the version. Okay, um, we will do this as well. Uh, we'll go come back to this. So here I also have some recommended uh, watch. Uh, you can watch um, uh, videos on how to install Python, Python tutorial for beginners, installation and setup, uh, Anaconda. So this is something um, you can, uh, if you have time, you can follow up. So um, now uh, I believe uh, we have um, um, downloaded the Quanda, uh, the, Py um, the mini Quanda or whatever, and um, Okay, I follow the YouTube link sent to me via email and install both Quanda and Mini Quanda is sufficient. Good. Okay, so somebody now who said that uh, you follow the uh, link and he installed um Quanda and Mini Quanda. So yeah, good. So let's. Hello, sir. Sorry for not raising my hand. I have, I have I need to help, sir. Yes, go on. I downloaded the Anaconda and the Mini Quanda, but while trying to to install, they telling me that the space. I even share a screenshot in the. The chat he's, box. He's telling what? He's telling what? He's telling me that there are space that I need to have and how far to press space. Okay, I, so listen, listen. Um, download mini quanda. Don't use anaconda. Download mini quanda. Install. Try to install mini quanda. I downloaded the mini quanda. They are telling me the same. They are giving me the same English. Okay, so maybe we can. Uh, you can wait. Maybe we can deal with that after our session. But uh, let, we will now move on to the next stage. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thanks. Yeah, we will, we will have an office hour where everyone that has problem, our mentors will try to solve those problems. So why Anaconda easy for beginners? So this is what I've been saying. Anaconda includes all the essential libraries and tools we will need, such as Pandas, NumPy, MyPro, Jupyter Notebook. Using Anaconda or Miniconda, let me put this one, um, Miniconda, make it easy to start coding without spending time in selling each package separately. So you can see if you are using mini Quanda or Anaconda, you you know it makes your life easier without going and selling 120 packages separately. Because when you want to do data science, you may need to install, for example, 20 packages, then you go, you need to go and install one by one separately. But when you install mini Quanda, you don't need you don't have that problem. You can, you know, uh, when you install Miniconda, it automatically install everything you need. So that's why we need um, either uh, Miniconda to be installed and we recommend it um, for uh, the beginners. But as you move on, you will understand that uh, um, you can do without Miniconda or Quanda, you can find your way. Uh, so if you, if we, um, you know, uh, install Python without Miniconda, so we typically need way to install other packages. We need to use what is called PIP, uh, for example, if I want to install pandas, I will say pip uh, install pandas or something like that. Can you see that? Oh, I can see quanda install pandas, something like that. So without that, you don't need to do all this um, stuff. Okay, so that's the reason why you need a uh, mini quanda. So let's go um, right in your first Python program. So can we confirm that um, now let's wait and, okay, we have uh, 1250, okay. Okay, somebody is asking what will happen now if you already have Python installed uh, differently. So if you already have Python installed on your computer, then you don't need to install MiniQuanda and whatsoever. But when you install MiniQuanda, then it will go and install the you know updated version. So maybe it will use the updated version because maybe your current version is Python maybe 3.1 or 2. So it will install the latest update. Uh, Okay. Um, yeah, so this page, um, so um, we can share this page for what we, uh, page, you can share with it uh, our Discord. Uh, share the link in our Discord so that, um, I mean, in uh, Telegram so that people can have access to that. All right. <sighs> so,
Okay, let me see questions. Okay, what after answering what is next? Okay. So somebody, people are now, okay, I think uh, people understand. Uh, a lot of people have installed. Now, what we can do next is after you install, um, you know, uh, after you install Python, um, I mean, Miniconda, um, there is what we call a command prompt or, on Windows. Um, I don't know how um, you open that now. Can somebody help us from the mentors uh, to explain how you can open command prompt in Windows? Because I didn't use Windows, I forgot um, how to come. Somebody, do I have uh, somebody here to show us um, how to open Windows? For example, I can see Lukman, I can see Falalu is here as well. Uh, can somebody, I can see Babangida, can somebody, um, you know, volunteer to share his screen uh, to open uh, his terminal so that we can see, so, so that the fellows can see how to open command uh, prompt. Um, if you, okay, if you are with your system, type in the chat, if you can. Okay, Zainab Ali is helping. Open the start menu and press Windows key plus R. So yeah, so I have this instruction here. This some um, instruction for Windows. You can use command prompt, PowerShell or Anaconda prompt, if Anaconda install. For Mac OS, you open terminal app. So we have terminal. Uh, Okay, for Windows, whatsoever you want. But for me, I have, um, you know, um, for me, I have uh, uh, my terminal. I have this. So I can use this one. Uh, oh. Yes. Oh. Hello? Right. So for me, I can use this okay. one. And if I want to start Python, I will just type Python. Uh, can you see when I type Python in my command? It just so I type Python, it just show Python 3.193, and you can see it start Python program. It start Python. So now we are in what we call command line, where we can write our Python uh, script. Um, I'm afraid uh, right now I don't have access to Windows, but uh, I think here in the chat we have people telling uh, how to open command uh, command prompt. You will see something blank screen. Uh, we will be able to. Uh, also, uh, you know, show it afterward. But for me, I'm using uh, Mac and uh, I will not be able to show most of you as a window. But you can see here, I open, I tap Python and then it opens something like this. So I can use something like this. Uh, I say print, uh, print, hello, Ario Data Sign. You can see it prints something like this. So this is Python program that print hello. You can use, I just use print, which is a keyword, and then it prints something here. So this means that when you, you can do this, your computer can be able to do this, then your Python installation is successful. Um, yeah, when you, uh, you can be able to open command prompts uh, you, and you'll be able to uh, type Python and it open this and type print uh, Python and you see that this one, then you are able to see um, uh, your Python installation is successful. And, don't bother about that. If you find it confusing, you are not able to uh, open, uh, we'll come over with uh, some of the fellows that have Windows so that they show you how to do this in Windows. So then um, don't get it, uh, you know, maybe this may confuse you. I may skip this one because I don't have Windows to show you, but we'll come over to this one. Uh, yeah, we'll come over to this one. So if you find it difficult to, uh, you know, uh, start the Python uh, from command line, um, we'll come back to this one uh, with Windows PC to show you how to do that. We'll skip into what is called IDE. Now you can see here, definitely I can use Python here. For example, I can say one plus one. You can see it gives me two, right? This is Python. I start doing Python. I can say two times two. This is four. This is Python, right? This is Python. Um, I can say um, 10 divided by two, this is five, this is Python. You can see I'm using Python for you know uh, calculations, right? But this is a blank environment, blank, which blank is what we mean, I mean, it's black. Uh, this is not a suitable environment to do programming. Um, so we will have what is called IDE, uh, that will be used for um, you know our data science. So Python IDE, 
IDE means integrated development environment, integrated development environment. So this means that if you want to do uh, programming, you need some sort of IDE, a kind of integrated development environment where you'll be able to write your code, where you'll be able to test your code, where you'll be able to debug your code. You can do everything you need. There are, however, there are several IDEs um, that are needed to do data um, in the world uh, outside there. Um, as I said, there are many IDEs that you can use for, you know, data science and also for Python. There are many IDEs, but what we'll be doing, you can see there is PyCharm, there is PyDA, there is VS Code, there is Atom, Ideal, and JupyterLab. There are many IDEs that you can use. If you have been using one of those IDEs, that's fine. You continue with it. But in this program, we'll be using what is called VS Code. VS Code is one of the most widely used IDE uh, for data science today. Yeah, BS code is one of the most widely used data science for, um, you know, uh, uh, B, uh, code to do, uh, today. And it is um, developed by Microsoft. So if you go to website, BS code. So if you go to this link, this is the, um, you know, the, you can see that. So this is what we will be using to do data science. This is called ID. You can see it. Um, it can do a lot of things. In fact, you can use um, uh, Copilot using AI in the Git, in the VS Code. Um, if you have an email, university email, university-based email, you can apply for the, um, you know, uh, GitHub for ed education, and you'll be able to get some kind of, um, you know, uh, free stuff. For example, Copilot, where which you'll be able to be using uh, uh, AI in your GitHub in your BS code, so you can apply for GitHub for education. So if you are a student and you have university-based email, you can come here and apply for something. Uh, it has a lot of benefits. So you click here and uh, it would take you to All right, uh, mobile app. So, Okay. Um Um, okay, yeah. So if you are a student and you have a university-based email, you can come to your access free GitHub education benefits. Some of the benefits you can have free GitHub Pro while you are a student, GitHub Developer Pack, and then um, some trainers. Uh, you can see while I was a student, also I applied for many things. And some of the benefits you can get, for example, they are a lot. Uh, you can see if you're a student, you can get like GitHub um, support, uh, GitHub code space, uh, and whatsoever, a lot of things. And you can get GitHub Copilot where you'll be able to use um, AI in your BS code. So this is something that, um, if you can go and follow the step, let me share the the link in the chat. You'll be able to.
uh, go and you know apply for that. Um, so somebody is asking, where can I find BS code? So BS code, uh, you need to go to this website. So there is difference between BS code and Quanda. So or mini Quanda and Anaconda. So mini Quanda or Anaconda that we installed is meant to install packages on our computer. Only packages, for example, it will install Python, it will install Pandas, it will install all of this one. But to install BS code that can be used, Anaconda or Miniconda don't install BS code. You need to install BS code separately. How can you install BS code? This is a link. And you click download BS code. Download for me because it shows I'm using Mac OS, it shows Mac. But for you, you when you click on it, it will download it to your Windows. So I share the link uh, for downloading BS code. Try to install it and see if you will be able to install a report issue. Try to install BS code. Try to install BS code. I share the link for BS code installation. Um, install the BS code and let us know if you have any issue before we move on. So you can see we have many uh, ID integrated environment that can be used for data science, PyCharm, Spider, BS code, but we are not interested in all of these. What we are interested in, we are interested in what is called BS code and uh, we are now on the process of installing BS code. So you can see BS code is a popular choice uh, for data science because it combines flexibility performance and uh, it features uh, many data science workflow. And so we will be using BS code for installation. Now go to the here, go to the official BS code website and download it. So here we have seen, uh, when you click here, it will take you, this is the official website for BS code. Now, when we went there, download it and now install, uh, the, um, you know, install, install it, install the BS code. When you install the BS code uh, in step two, there are many other steps that you will be able to do after installation. Uh, you need to install other uh, extension in the BS code. Uh, but let me just wait a bit for like two, four, or five minutes. You cannot get the link to install BS code. Um, you know, let me share the link again. This is a link to install BS code. I share the link to install BS code. Uh, I give um, two minutes or three minutes to install BS code before we continue because we will install other packages and you need to install BS code first before you install those packages. Uh, install the BS code now. And if you have any question, put in the chat. Hello. The GitHub link is for students. And for that students, if you have university-based email, you will get um, you know, a lot of bounties free, um, for example, such as uh, GitHub Copilot, which if you are paying, you may be paying $10 per month. But with students, uh, you'll be getting all those freebies free. Uh, so if you are a teacher um, or work at university, you have uh, email. Uh, for example, I have email Shamsuddin at buk.edu.ng. If you have that email, then you can apply it and get, um, you know, uh, those um, uh, garabas or all those freebies. Yep. And this is a link, as I said, uh, Little for Education. Yeah, GitHub for Education, and you can start from here. I share the link for GitHub for Education where you can apply. How can some get university-based email? Yeah, if you are a student, uh, okay, that's a good question. I think if you are a student, for example, in Bayer University, student, they have email, right, at buk.edu.ng. If you are also staff, um, um, you have that one. Okay. Um, 
Can we continue if you all install BS code? Now, if you don't have uh, university-based email, you cannot uh, uh, get that preview. Uh, what I'm saying, you can use GitHub, but this one gives you more accessibility for some other stuff that you need to pay. GitHub in general is free. GitHub is free for everyone. But for example, if you want to use uh, Copilot, which is future for using AI to help you write better code, faster code, you need to pay, um, you know, GitHub Copilot. For example, let me show you GitHub Copilot. GitHub um, Copilot. So this is it. GitHub Copilot, the world's most widely used uh, AI developer tool. Meaning like when, you, so let's, let, let me write a unit test function. So it will automatically write code for you. Can you see that? So it automatically write code for you uh, when you are working on something. Um, so this is something that if you are a student, you can get free. Um, yep. Okay. Any question? Yeah, silence is rising his hand. Can you speak up? Okay. Um, who is um raising his hand? Oh, silence, so I didn't. If I pronounce your name wrong. Okay. Let me actually yeah, I'm asking him. Hello? Yes, go on. Yeah, I downloaded the uh, the mini conda, but um, I, I I don't understand it. Not the uh the background scene. But I press that. What was one thing you did earlier, and it showed two. Right. So as I said, um, after this session, we will have different session where we will do like um debugging with different people. For example, after this session. I uh, will attempt to answer a question, but now uh, if you have any problem, uh, just write it. And if we um, will not be able to uh, solve it, then uh, we'll be able to do after the session. So, so that we finish what we plan to finish. Okay, so okay. after you download the DS uh, code, you need to install what we call extension. So DS code, hello, uh, let me unmute other people so that we can help. When you install BS code, uh, this is something that will open. This is called BS code. Uh, this is called BS code. Um, I think maybe uh, we can stop here because it's already on top of the hour. We have 10 minutes on top of the three o'clock. Maybe we can continue from here in Salem Visual Studio Code uh, tomorrow uh, so that we don't stretch people. Uh, but uh, if you have any issue, you can follow these guides. Um, also, we have some recommended videos, for example, on that. Uh, getting started with Python in BS Code. Uh, you can watch this video, for example. Uh, you have this link. Watch this video. I believe you would get a set of ways to do the installation. But with, um, you know, the, it's time now, 10 minutes after three, we are one hour. So we'll stop here and uh, we'll continue tomorrow. And um, I will assure you we'll have sessions where we will have our mentors try to help you. You will join the session. Uh, if you have any question, um, you will be able, we'll be able to support you and provide some clarification. So um, uh, yeah, so thank you for joining us. Uh, uh, Sorry, I think, sir, yes. On any particular topic for us. You say what? Any material for us that we can download? So that you'll be able to read like yes yes so um what we are saying now is we are using what is called getting started um this link is uh self-sufficient for now but when we finish this getting started and installation uh, we will have our normal github repository with a uh, comprehensive uh, our curriculum that you will follow but now this installation this document we shared it contains all the steps you need to get started and also with some recommendations on uh, follow-up uh, yeah, so we will have everything needed uh, when we finish this installation uh, so that you will have a comprehensive, uh, you know, curriculum for that. Yeah, but now follow this guide we have in this document for the installations. If you have any question, uh, ask in the channel and then we'll be able to support you. Um, yeah, we will upload the recording for the session as well. 
uh, so that if you miss something or if you want to um, you know, go over something, yeah, we'll do that. Um, we have a question from Mujahid, go on. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you very much, sir, for the presentation. Um, sir, I want to ask a question regarding what you made mention of GitHub. Sorry, GitHub. Uh, you made mention that if a student has a university email, then that student can be able to access GitHub without paying any money. So my question is, what about us that we graduated? Because I graduated last year and I don't have a university email. It was even later that I graduated. Yeah, I understand I the question. I understand the question. So let me just make it clear for everyone here. GitHub is free for everyone. It's free. It's free for everyone. You don't need um, any university. Email. What I'm saying is, there are some, you know, uh, more benefits that you can get when you have university email that you can apply for what we call GitHub for Education. GitHub for Education gives you some flavor, some uh, access, to allow you to access some other stuff such as GitHub Copilot that can help you in writing code using AI. But that is not part of our curriculum. You don't need that. What we need is only create GitHub account. You can create GitHub account with any email, immaterial if you are a student or you are not a student. So for this class, for anyone working uh, to create GitHub, you don't need uh, to be a student at university. I just bring it for other students, uh, for other people that are university, that there is something GitHub for education that you can apply, which can help them in a way. But uh, it's okay if you don't have, um, you know, a university email. It's not necessary at all. Just think about it. It's not necessary to have the. Just use your email, a normal email at Gmail to apply for, you know, get, to open an account for GitHub. Yes, yes. So when we, that's why um, we have this uh, getting started. We'll teach you how to create GitHub account. We'll teach you how to do many things with GitHub. So assignment will be submitting. You will be submitting your assignment on GitHub. Yeah. Uh, yes, somebody is asking, how can we create GitHub? That will come over in next week. Um, everything is step by step. Uh, but if you want to go faster in our ROGS uh, last year, you can go watch over the recordings there. It's everything explained. But um, we'll come over next week to show you how to create GitHub and do uh, many other things. But everything is step by step. As you can see right now, you are able, we discuss about Python and whatsoever. Uh, yeah. Any other question? Um, any other question? Uh, Muhammad Alaya, we cannot hear you. Muhammad Alaya. OK, yes, I'm Muhammad Alaya. Please, uh, I want to ask, is GitHub an IDE or what? OK, good question. Somebody is asking, is GitHub an IDE or what? No. So um, IDE is something that allow us to write Python code. So for example, uh, let me share. Um, so for example, this one, this is IDE. You can see this is what we call IDE. It allow us to write Python code, like to do many other stuff. This is IDE. But GitHub is not an IDE. Rather, GitHub is, yeah, GitHub is a kind of, right, GitHub is kind of a way to allow people to collaborate on the same document and share documents. So this is it, let me tell you. Anyway, this is not the class for GitHub. In the next week, we'll, like, we'll discuss GitHub. Um, we created this document. You can see them on website, but we want many other people to collaborate and create this document. GitHub allow multiple people to collaborate on the same document. For example, let me give you an example. Let's assume you want to write a letter uh, to send to uh, maybe a president, president in Nigeria. And that letter need to be write, written by or signed by all the ministers. We have maybe 36 ministers, just an example. Um, then if you want every one of those ministers to sign, they must come together into one room or one space, or you need to send each one email to, you know, to send that letter. But if you can have a way whereby 
you can put that letter in one place and every minister can just come and write his signature from his home, from his bed, just write his home, his name. You can see they collaboratively do something remotely. So GitHub is a kind of, um, you know, a way in which allow people using data science to collaboratively work on documents. So you can see here, for example, this is me, this is Dr. Idris, this is uh, uh, Lukuman, this is Dr. Ibrahim, this is uh, Saminu. Everyone contributed in creating this uh, GitHub repository. So GitHub repository is a kind of central location where people can collaborate to create a single document. I don't know if this really makes sense or oh, it's confusing still. Um, Muhammad Alaya, does this make sense or no? Yes, I'm, I'm understanding you. I'm getting it. Yes, sir. Yeah, it makes so sense to me, sir. Yeah, so um, this class is not about GitHub today, but next week we'll discuss more about GitHub. If GitHub is something that is still confusing, it's supposed to be confusing because we don't cover it. You just ask it. So next week we'll discuss what is GitHub in fact. Now we haven't even defined what is GitHub, but next week we'll discuss what is GitHub. But in a nutshell, just to give you an example, GitHub is just like a, a way that allows you to collaboratively work on the same document with multiple people. So you can see here, me and my friend, we work on the same document and we share it online. And you people, you can read it. So that's the way uh, GitHub, yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, any other question? Hello. Yes, go on. Yeah, it's just about the uh, precision. I upload uh, my Visual Studio from uh, Microsoft Store. Is it bad or I have to go to the official website to what is upload it? Store? What is Microsoft Store? What is that store? I don't know about that store. The store for Microsoft where we can you can download uh some she means Microsoft Microsoft. Ah, all right, yeah, 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 yeah. So you can download it wherever you um so I think I don't know um from yeah, I think it's still the same, maybe the link. It's okay. If you download it, it's the same thing, then um that's fine. But um yeah, that's fine if you download it from anywhere. If you can see the link, I think it will mirror this uh website, um, this link. So it's okay. Yeah, we are going to have a lecture tomorrow as well uh, to continue with uh, getting started. Yeah, uh, Kate, Kate share is okay if you install VS Code, uh, that's fine. So what I want to say is um, follow the what we discuss here, what we share in this um, our document, follow step-by-step step what we discuss. If you have any question, we have our mentors in the Telegram that can attempt to answer your question. We will tell them that you um, have a lot of questions and they are, will be there. To respond to your question. Um, yeah, any other question? All right, so thank you very much for joining us. Um, we will upload the recordings for this one today and uh, before tomorrow, and uh, you can be able to review that and come tomorrow with many questions, as many as you have, and as well, uh, chat to us in the Telegram if you have any questions. So bye bye for now. And one thing I would like to tell you is that make sure you do uh cover whatever you, is being discussed uh you know in the uh session because for example tomorrow what we'll do tomorrow will build on what is being discussed today so if you miss you or you haven't implemented what we do today you may not be able to follow tomorrow so thank you very much and we we'll see you tomorrow bye bye for now ciao ciao